Okay, so we're going to review um, for the exam. Um, on the first page, there's some terms, and I feel like you probably um, know what those are. You remember what an obligate parasite is. That's the one that has to have a host in order to survive. Um, you need to make sure that you know um, the different forms, what a cyst um, is and what a troph is. Um, the cyst is an inactive, um, indicates an inactive infection, but the troph is an active infection. Um, the cyst is in formed stool, usually. This is not set in stone. And the troph is usually found in watery stool. Um, when we collect for these, um, they're put into those two vials, and one of them has, of them has formalin in it, and one of them has a polyvinyl alcohol. Um, so one is for the concentration procedure, and one is for the trichrome stain, which is the usually the um, that's the most common the most common one that's done. Okay. Um, The PVA is for the trichrome stain, and the form is for the concentration um, procedures. Whenever, whenever we get a specimen, we do the direct wet mount, and we usually do one with just the specimen, and then we do one with iodine to look for um, trophs. Remember these concentration procedures, the zinc sulfate, the formalin ethyl acetate, and the sheather sugar flotation. All of these are based on specific gravity. Make sure you know what, what specimens, um, what kind of specimens are collected for a certain parasite. That will help you answer questions like if a patient has strongyloides, it can get into their lungs and they cough it up so the specimen might be sputum. That will help you answer the questions if, the, if it says sputum or he coughed it up, that will help you answer it. There's more than just strongyloides with the um, sputum though. Okay, so this is a trove. That dot in the center is the karyosome. Um, you need to make sure that you know all the characteristics that stick out for everything. I would make sure I know those things. Entamoeba histolytica, what do we know about it? It has finger-like pseudopods. It can ingest red cells. It has a bull's, bullseye karyosome. It's the only pathogen in this the entamoeba group. It has a ground glass peripheral chromatin, cigar-shaped chromatid bars. Um, most of the symptoms and what goes on with the patient are almost always the same. Fever, nausea, chill, chills, abdominal pain, diarrhea. Make sure that you know the stuff that is unique to um, each of these. With Entamoeba histolytica, it can make flask-shaped ulcers in the colon. And the rest of the um, symptoms are kind of vague or they kind of go along with the other organisms. It can um, move to the lungs. It can go to the liver. Um, there aren't, are not any questions that um, pertain to treatment. If I were you, I would look at them, and the reason I say that is because 
we will get a call. Not long ago, somebody asked me what was one of the um, drugs that was used for a parasite. And it's like good to know, but you don't have to know it for your exam. Um, what is this? Okay, never mind. I don't have a picture of it. The Charcot Laden Crystal. What is that? It's a breakdown product of eosinophils. And it's a purplish red color on a trichrome stain. And it's purplish red because it's a different kind of stain from right stain. On a right stain, it's probably the color of an eosinophil. And that can be seen with any parasite, not just um, histolytica. Okay, for Hartmani, um, let's see, what's special about Hartmani? It has one nucleus, um, cigar-shaped chromatid bars. It's rather small. Um, no red cells, it's non-progressive motility, and that's about it. A diffuse glycogen mass, I would know that. Okay, um, what, I know you remember this thing about Entamoeba coli, what's special about it? more than four nuclei in a cyst is indicative of E. coli. So what else do we know? It has blunt pseudopods, a large irregular shaped karyosome, um, splinter shaped chromatid bars that are pointed at both ends, and a good glycogen mass. And I don't have any pictures of the chromatid bars, but they're supposed to be um, pointed. Okay, Endolimax nana is the one that has the large blot-like karyosome. Blunt pseudopods. Um, the cyst has a blunt pseudopod, a glycogen mass. This is the smallest one, 4 to 12, 5 to 12 in size. Most commonly, four nuclei. What do you remember about iodamoeba? Iodine. iodine. And the reason the iodine stains well is because what? That glycogen mass. It stains the glycogen mass, which is this thing right here. It sta the iodine stains the glycogen mass really well, so that's where it got its name. Um, it has a large center karyosome. The nuclei is supposed to look like a basket of flowers. And a large glycogen mass compared to the other ones. Okay. Um, the free-living amoeba, Nagleria is the first one. I know you remember this one. It has three forms. It's the one that's in the water, and it can go through up the patient's nose and into their brain. Um, the amoeboid troph is the only one that's supposed to be seen in humans. Um... It has, the patient will have lesions in their brain filled with trophs, neutrophils, and eosinophils from where their body is trying to um, fight it off. The flagellate troph has jerky movements and spinning. It has two flagella. The cyst has a double cell wall. That's the cyst. Um... One thing that can help to identify it is when you have E. coli growing on a plate, 
you add it if the patient has it or they think they have it then they drop a drop of spinal fluid and if the organism is there it will eat the E. coli that's on the plate. It causes primary anemic um, meningoencephalitis Okay, acanthamoeba, um, it has a trophinaceus. The troph has these spine-like projections around it, which are supposed to be their pseudopods. And what about the cyst has that wrinkled-looking cell wall, ragged, is that what your notes? A ragged, wrinkled-look double cell wall. Um, this is usually seen in eye infections and um, the, it can cause granulomatous amoebic encephalitis, G-A-E. Um, it spreads from the lungs, it can cause lesions that cause personality disorders, or it causes an eye infection from contact lens solution. Okay, I'm not going to go over those terms because you probably know those now. Okay, Giardia, um, there's a lot of special things about Giardia. It's bilaterally symmetrical. It's supposed to look like an old man. It has falling leaf motility. Um, how many flagella does it have? Eight or four pair. It's shaped like a pear. Um, okay, it causes um, foul-smelling explosive diarrhea. It can be identified by the enterotest. Remember that's the string that has the peel on it and you swallow it and they pull it back up. It's the most common intestinal pathogenic protozoan of humans in the United States. That's the kind of questions that I noticed were on there. Um, it can cause malabsorption syndrome and IgA deficient people are more susceptible. What I just said are like the distinguishing things for Giardia. Not that the other stuff is in, not in, it's not important, but if you've got a case study, you might only need three little facts and you know the answer. Okay, chylomastics, um, this one is shaped, what well, says like a pear and the cyst is shaped like a lemon. Um, it has the shepherd's crook um, that's really the t um, spiral groove. Um, the cyst is shaped like a lemon and it has a hyaline knob. Um, this one is not um, considered a pathogen. Okay, diantamoeba does not have a cyst stage and it most commonly has two nuclei. Um, it has broad hyaline pseudopods. Um, this one, the very last part of your note says that um, patients are usually infected with enterobius, the pinworm, or ascaris if they have diantamoeba. So the patient might have diantamoeba and pinworms at the same time or diantamoeba and ascaris at the same time. Okay, um, Trichomonas hominis. Um, this one is also pear shaped. It has the jerky, and so does vaginalis, has the rapid jerking movement. Um, it has three to five flagella anteriorly and one posteriorly. This one has a full undulating membrane. And then vaginalis has. Um, an undulating membrane halfway the body. They neither one of these have a cyst form. 
hominis is an uh, intestinal thing, so it causes diarrhea. Um, vaginalis is a vaginal, which is usually transmitted by ST, I mean, sexual contact, but it can be from water because vaginalis can live uh, in water for up to 40 minutes. So it can be on a toilet seat, it can be in a wet towel, those kinds of things. Um, women who have vaginalis have foul smelling greenish yellow discharge. Okay, Leishmania, um, these are the parasites and these are the, they look like little cysts, but they're called amastigotes. Um, it comes from sand flies. You need to know the vectors, like what kind of tick, what kind of fly, what kind of mosquito. Um, it's seen in rainforests where chicle sap is used for chewing gum. Um, it causes a spondia, which are ulcers in the mouth and the face. Um, biopsy is done of the ulcer. They um, put it on a slide and they look at it and look for these little amastigotes. And this is seen in South America. It's not here, most likely. If that's in a question, there should be other stuff to help you answer it. Um, I've never told the students that they needed to um, memorize those unless unless um, it helps you answer the. Or sometimes I'll say um, know that because it's in the United States. Um, okay, did I? Oh, this is Leishmania donovani. This is the most severe. Um, and you see the three um, different species. You need to make sure you know the kind of sand flies for those. And Donovani complex causes the most severe disorder. Okay, this one causes visceral lesmaniasis, cala azar, dum dum fever, and black fever. And the black fever, that word comes from um, their skin turning a dark looking color. Um, okay. Leishmania tropica causes cutaneous leishmania, leishmaniasis, old world leishmaniasis, oriental sore, Baghdad bull, or Delhi bull. And you know on your test, I'm not going to ask you which one causes old, old war leishmaniasis. I will say oriental sore or Baghdad bull because they don't have the word leishmania in them. Um, they have bulls that heal on their own, on their face or extremities. Okay, trypanosoma, um, these are the trypomastigotes that are seen in the blood smear. They're spread by tsetse flies and this causes sleeping sickness, and this one is West African sleeping sickness. So see, you need to know that, West African. Um, the patients have um, lymph node enlargement that's called winter bottom sign. You need to know that. Okay, the next one is more virulent, bruisey rhododensis. Um, it's the more virulent, and this is East African sleeping sickness, and it doesn't have lymph node enlargement. Trypanosoma cruzi, um, the vector is the retivid kissing or cononose bug. These are usually found in um, open designed homes. And it's usually seen in children. They're shaped, you know, these are shaped like C's and um, U's. Um, the first symptom is a nodule at the site, site of the infection. It causes something called Romana's sign. 
and this is when they swell, have swelling around their eyes. Okay, malaria come um, is um, transmitted by what? Mosquitoes, and do you remember the name of them? Anopheles. Anopheles mosquito. They're obligate intracellular parasites. That means they have to have a host. And the disease is called malaria, but the organism is plasmodium. It's a sporozoa. We make the specimen is an EDTA sample. We make thin and thick smears to look for those. Okay, for, I'm pretty sure you know the phases. For Vivax, it has a 48 hour life cycle. The red cells are larger than normal. The ring is one third um, of the red cell. Um, Schuffner's dots can be seen. There are 12 to 24 merozoites. The Schuffner's dots are condensed hemoglobin. And that's them. And the patients have photophobia. That's the only one that mentions photophobia as Vivax. Ovale has a 48 hour life cycle. This is the one that has the wrinkled edges, ragged edges, um, fringe like edges, fimbriation, all those words. Um, it can have double dots. It has one third the diameter of the red cell, um, often a thick ring form. Six to twelve merozoites, an average of eight. Um, mer the Shazan is usually smaller than Vivax. It has Schuffner's dots. It's the least common. Okay, Malaria has a 72 hour life cycle. The red cells are mature, so they're the correct size. The rings are smaller. They ha only are supposed to take up a sixth of the red cell, and they have a heavier chromatin um, dot. Um, the trove can have the band or bar shape. The chazant has the daisy petal, um, and it has six to 12. And this one can have these zeman dots, which are, um, pink dots of the cytoplasm. Falciparum is um, the one with has the highest parasitemia. It has the, um, it's the most severe and it has the most organisms in the patient sample. Um, this can have two chromatin dots and look like a headphone. And this is the one that has the applique um, rings that look like they're trying to get out of the red cell. It has 8 to 36 merozoites. This one has the banana shaped sausage crescent shaped um, gametocytes. And it has these Mars dots, which are just protein. And this one can cause black water fever, which the patient has intravascular hemolysis and they have hemoglobin in their urine. Okay, Babesia is on, the rings are on the inside and the outside of the red cells. There should be no other forms like Chazants or whatever. Um, this is transmitted by the exodes tick. Patient has like flu-like symptoms. 
Um, I saw that one. Oh, it can have Maltese cross um, rings. Okay, toxo toxoplasma. Um, it has an insisted form of the zygote that has mature sporozoites in them. The tachozoite is crescent shaped and it's the actively multiplying form. Bradyozo I don't have a picture. Bradyozoite is a um, larger cell that has it has a it the bradyozoites are in a cyst, so they're in a cyst form and they have fifty to a thousand bradyozoites in it. Um, most well half of the United States has been exposed to it and we have antibodies. It comes from rats. It can be inhaled in the um, from the feces of cat and the cat litter. It's it, it's um, dangerous for pregnant women because of their baby and patients who have AIDS or HIV. Um, it mimics um, mono, so they have those types of symptoms. Okay, Isospora, um, it has two sporoblasts that become a sporocyst, and the sporocyst has four sausage-shaped sporozoites in the center of them. Um, a colorless two-layered cell wall. Um, down at the bottom, eosinophilia, charcot-laden crystals, malabsorption, and increased fecal fat. Okay, Cryptosporidium parva is four to six um, micrometers. Um, I usually um, remember that because it's like the smallest one that we talk about besides Nana, but it's really small, so sometimes that can hard to be hard to be seen. They have a thick cell wall and they have um, like a halo around them where this part doesn't stain. It has one to six dark um, granules. It's refractile. Um, this usually comes from contaminated water. It causes patients to lose a lot of fluid, um, three to six liters a day. And what kind of stain is this? Acid fast. So. Um, a lot of times this is done, modified acid fast, acid fast to identify. Valentidium is the largest protozoa that um, we talk about. It has um, cilia all the way around it. It had, does it have a double cell wall? The cysts have a double cell wall. It has a kidney bean micronucleus and a kidney bean macronucleus. Pig is the known reservoir. Okay, pneumocystis. Did I skip blastocystis? Blastocystis um, is a vacuolated organism. The central part of it looks like a big old vacuole. It's so large that it may not even look like a vacuole because it's so large, but the vacuole takes up 90% of the organism. You remember saline, using saline will lyse it because it's, the vacuole fills up with saline. It has a ring around the periphery, two to four um, nuclei located in the cytoplasma. Water and saline will lyse the results and cause a... Um, false negative. Let me see if I can show y'all one of those cysts. I don't remember if we looked at it before. Do y'all remember? Blastocystis hominis cyst. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so these are the nuclei. You can see two at least. This big thing is the, um, okay, must be an inside joke. Oh, here's another one. You can see the nuclei are in the outside of it. Okay. Um, pneumocystis. Um, these are usually identified by cytologies from the lungs. Um, they're small, little cysts. They have four to eight nuclei, um, sometimes range, arranged in a rosette. Gomori silver stain is the best method. It's the leading cause of death in AIDS patients. Um, patients develop or can develop Kaposi sarcoma, which is a skin cancer that evidently is related to this, and it causes atypical interstitial plasma cell pneumonia. Okay, let me just find number two. <clears throat> okay, um, the trematodes. What do you need to know about this? Um, the metacercariae is the infective stage for humans. The host, fish, crabs, crayfish, and patients get these from eating those animals or from raw water plants. Um, that are in that pond or wherever they come from. Okay. Um, the flukes, fasciola buski and hepatica, um, the eggs, they're almost indistinguishable. These are all larger than those other ones. Um, they have an operculum with a cap-like lid. Um, hepatica has shoulders, buski doesn't. You need to make sure you know common names. Buski is the giant intestinal fluke. Um, hepatica is the sheep liver fluke. The natural host is the sheep. Um, hepatica resides in the bile duct, buski, the small intestines. These can, well it just says buski, can mimic an ulcer. So the patients and the doctor may think that they have an ulcer. Okay, Apisothorcus. Um, this was clonorchis. It has a, a perculum, a cap, uh, distinct shoulders, and a hyaline knob. And these are all, they have all the um, same symptoms as the other ones. That's about all you need to know about that. It's the Chinese liver fluke. Paragonimus oriental lung fluke. It has prominent operculum with shoulders, no knob. The worm is red brown in color. It's so red looking it looks like it's been stained. It has a cuticle with spines. This um, causes paragonimus paragonomiasis, which is supposed to mimic TB infections. So what, what specimen might this be if they have pulmonary? They may have a sputum or anything from the lungs. Okay, schistosomas. Mansoni is Mason's fluke. Japonicum is a blood fluke. Hematobium is the bladder fluke. Um, the eggs... They have those spines. Mansoni has a large lateral spine. is seen in the intestinal tract. Japonicum, a small lateral spine. This is the most severe with the most eggs. Hematobium has a large terminal spine. And this one's in the bladder. Other two are intestines. That one's in the bladder. Um... The first symptom is inflammation at the um, penetration site. This is ones that go, can go in your skin, you know. 
um, spine of the organisms can cause necrosis, hepatic lesions, and granulomas. Hematobium can cause nephrotic syndrome. This is also known as swimmer's itch when um, the patient has a severe allergic reactions to the organism. Okay, enterobius, this is the most common health helmet in the United States. Um, the egg is oval, flattened on one side, double layer, cell wall. Um, the females have the pin head, that's where they get their name. You know this is the cellophane tape procedure. Auto infection or retro infection can occur when the patient infects themselves with their hand or the worm travels outside of the body and lays eggs and starts the process all over. Patients have itching. Um, if it's a little kid and they can't tell you what's wrong, then they'll be, oh no, mine have this. <laughs> Um, irritable, difficulty sleeping, and they can have nausea and vomiting too. Um, usually everybody's treated in the family because it spreads so easy. Trichuris is the whip worm. Um, remember the worm has that long whip on the end. It's um, shaped like a football or barrel and it has two polar plugs on the ends. Um, it's found where human feces is used as a fertilizer. It can cause rectal prolapse and it can mimic inflammatory bowel disease. Ascaris, remember this one um, can be corticated or decorticated. Um, do you remember what the cortical coating is made of? Nitrogen. Okay, this is the large intestinal roundworm. These are very large worms that can be seen with the naked eye. It's the most common intestinal helmet in the world. Second in the United States after the pinworm, and it's seen a, um, a lot in the Appalachian Mountains. The adults can lay up to 250,000 eggs a day. This one can also travel to the lungs, or it's coughed. They, they can cough it up and swallow it, and it can um, cause infection all over again. Okay, the hookworms. This is a hookworm. You can't tell the eggs apart. They have a two, four, eight cell stage of the um, um, embryos on the inside. The filariform larvae is the active feeding form. The filariform is the um, infective stage. The worms have a hook on the end. Necator has cutting plates. Acclostoma has teeth. One-fourth of the world's population is infected. This one can penetrate the skin, usually the feet. Okay, the um, itching at the site where they enter is called ground itch. And bad infections can cause microcytic hyperchromic anemia and hyperproteinemia. Okay, strongyloides, um, the egg has two, four, eight cell stage. The larva has a notched tail. It has like somebody took the scissors and clipped out a tip in the center of the tail. 
Um, it has a cuticle, is parthenogenic, means that it can reproduce by, by his, herself. This one can also travel to the lung, so sputum would be an optional specimen. It can cause malabsorption syndrome. And that's it. Okay, trichinella. Um, this is the encysted organism that coils up in nurse cells um, in the muscles. It comes from meat. What kind of meat? Majority is pork. It travels through the bloodstream, gets into the muscle, and coils up to feed from the nerve from the cells, and they eventually die. Um, the specimen of choice is the um, like a biopsy of the muscle that's supposed to be infected. Muscle enzymes are increased. Y'all didn't know what those were when we talked about this, so y'all know what they are now, especially after you took that final exam. Um, so those um, enzymes are increased because there's muscle damage and those enzymes are um, released. It's known as the great imitator because it looks like other types of infections, especially the flu. Okay, the filariae. Wucheria is Bancroft's filariae. It has a sheath. It has no nuclei at the tip of the tail. The anterior is blunt and round. The mosquito, the Culex, Aedes, and Anopheles mosquito are the vectors. This is a nocturnal organism, so the specimen should be um, collected between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. in order to get a good specimen where the organism can hopefully be seen. Um, you use heparinized, so that would be a green top or anything else that has um, heparin in them. There's sodium heparin and lithium heparin. Um, anyway, um, and then they filter the blood because the worm is larger and it will stay in the filter. Um, so they stain that. It causes Bancroftian filariasis. Patients develop elephantiasis and secondary bacterial infections are common. So they get other infections um, in other places. Okay, Loa Loa has a sheath. It has a row of nuclei at the tip of the tail and a round anterior end. It is transmitted by the Cropsops deer fly. This one is diurnal, so 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is the best time to ch um, collect it. Isn't that what urobilinogen, is urobilinogen the di diurnal thing on the urinalysis? Do you remember? One of those things is diurnal, and I want to say it's urobilinogen, but... Okay, this is the African eye worm. Um, you know you can see it when it crosses over their nose. Oncocerca, no sheath, no nuclei, it has a pointed tail. Um, these worms can typically coil up in infected nodules and then um, skin snips from those nodules are um, put on a slide and um, stained. The simulium black fly is the vector. It comes from running water streams and um, rivers. Um, the worms live in subcutaneous fibrous tumors. Okay. The tinea egg has an hexacanth embryo. That means it has three pairs of hooklets. Um, the cystocircus larva is also known as the um, bladder worms. Um, the tinias are the tape worms. The eggs um, have three pairs of hooklets, radial striations. 
Solium has a rostellum. Is that right? Solium. Solium. Double crown of hooks. And then um, Saginatus has suckers. Is that what they're called? Suckers? I can't find it. Okay. Um, the lateral branches of the proglottid. Remember that proglottid is the different sections. Um, Saginata has 15 to 30 and Solium has 7 to 15. It comes from beef and pork. Brain infections are common. Diminuta is a hexacanth embryo. Polar thickenings um, are opposite at, at opposite ends of the embryo. No polar filaments. Um, the worms, not shown, but it has four suckers, a rostellum, but no hooks. Contaminated droppings from rats, and it's transmitted by the grain beetle or a flea. Nana, um, it has polar thickenings and filaments, hexacath embryo, four suckers, short rostellum, one row of hooks. It has a sac-like uterus filled with eggs. It's the most common tapeworm in the southeastern United States seen in children's nurseries. The dwarf tapeworm um, disease is what it causes. Canium, this is the big egg packet, 5 to 30 eggs. Um, each egg has uh, six hooklets, three pairs. The worm, four suckers, a club-shaped rostellum with one to seven circlets of spine and no hooks. The gravid preglotted is shaped like a pumpkin seed. It's from dogs and cats. Um, humans are accidental by flea, dog, or cat lick. Latum has um, an operculum on one end, a terminal knob on the other one. This one has a yellow to brown shell. The Skolex has, I thought I had a picture of that, but evidently not. Um, the Skolex has two almond-shaped sucking grooves. So where those other ones have that round thing, it ha it's like long. Have I showed you a picture of that? Um, shaped like a um, almond, and the gravid proglottid has a rosette formation. This comes from the copepod flea on fish or in fish. It causes fish tapeworm, broad, um, broad fish tapeworm, vitamin B12 deficiency, and megaloblastic anemia, which y'all should be familiar with that too, right? Okay, um, the mycology. You remember what a septate is when they have the cross walls. Um, fungi don't have any chlorophyll. They're eukaryotes, mold, yeast, and mushrooms. Dimorphism means that they grow in different phases. At 25 degrees room temperature, it grows as a mold. At 37, it grows as a yeast or the tissue phase. The ones that are dimorphic are the most serious. Okay, I'm going to skip to the first ones. The zygomycota. I, I know you probably know what these are for. KOH is for hair, skin, and nails. The gram stain, you see budding yeast. They're larger than cocci. Um, Calcifloor white is a fluorescent stain. India inks for cryptococcus. Um, you see a halo. Like the phenyl cotton blue is used to identify fungus, you just add a drop. Um, gem sus for histoplasma. Um, make sure you know those, which I think you do. 
Okay, um, the zygomycota. Do you remember if these have cross walls? Are they septate or what? They're A. They don't have any. Okay, so abscidia, the rhizoids are the roots. Um, abscidia branches off in between the rhizoids. The columella is shaped like a pear. Um, it's usually, you don't need to know the colors. Okay. Um, mucor, it doesn't have any rhizoids, so it doesn't have stolen, has stolons because the stolons are the part in the middle. Um, okay. Um, Rhizopus, the um, sporangia four branches off directly above the rhizoid. It has a flattened base at the bottom of this sporangium. Okay, it causes zygomycosis. Mycosis. Um, to you and I, it wouldn't cause a problem, but it can end up in meningoencephalitis in an immunocompromised patient. Where do they get it from? Anywhere in the environment. It's the things that grows on our bread. Okay. Aspergillus, um, it has a foot cell at the base. This is the, supposed to be the foot cell. You're supposed to see a distinguishing little cell, even though it's kind of long. At the bottom, um, it has flask-shaped phyllids. These are these spores. Um, this causes um, farmer's lung, which is an allergic bronchopulmonary disease. Um, this comes from anywhere. Penicillium is the one that we say looks like fingers. I want you to know that these are green in color, the um, mold. Okay, um, it has flask-shaped phyllids, just by asper just like aspergillus. You tell the difference by how these conidia are arranged. Okay, this causes. It can cause tumors or lesions. It can spread in the entire body in immunocompromised patients. Okay, the dermatophytes. This is the hair, skin, and nails. Um, you need to study that chart again. Aldoweeny is salmon in color. It has poor growth on rice grains. Looks like rice. <laughs> um, causes tinea capitis. That's ringworm of the head. Epidermophyton flocculosum. Mm -hmm. um, it has club shaped macrochamidia. It doesn't have any micro, the small ones. And it's seen in athletes' foot in summer camps and institutions. Trichophyton has macro and micro. These are the pencil shaped macrochamidia. The smaller microconidia are sometimes in grape-like clusters. Trichophyton rubrum has a red color on potato dextrose agar. Meningrophites is positive for the urease test. Rubrum is negative, and that's at the seven days. This also causes athlete's foot. Um, it can cause ringworm all over the body. Um, rubrum, deep red pigment. Trichophyton tonsorus. You need to know it's supposed to um, have a great size and shape variation with the conidia. So 
they're small, they're large, they're shaped like this, they're shaped like that, you know, they just look all messed up. It causes over 90% of tinea capitis in the United States, and it causes black dot tinea capitis, where they have little black dots where their hair come out. Um, make sure you know these week one, week two, week three, on on, on and on. Um, what goes on, it's kind of, um, you, if you've had one, you probably know. <laughs> I guess that's the good thing about having it. Okay, candida, AIDS patients, immunocompromised pregnancy, diabetics. It can be mistaken for staph. The germ tube, candida albicans, um, is positive. There are some other rare ones. Candida albicans is normal flora of the throat. It can cause thrush. Um, nail infections, vaginal infections, cryptococcus comes from pigeon droppings, it can be inhaled, um, it's seen more often now because of AIDS patients, so it can be in their blood, in their lung sputums, any kind of um, lung specimens. And then it can spread and be in their blood or their spinal fluid. Um, we studied Geotrichum and Torolopsis because they look like some of the other ones. Geotrichum looks like Coxoides and tor Torolopsis looks like Pistoplasma. Okay, do you remember um, Sporothrix? Um, the Sporothrix has... Um, the daisies on them, and um, this starts the ones that are dimorphic. So the daisies are at room, room temperature, and these are the cigar bodies at 37. It comes from thorns, hay, or wood. They have dark lesions. The fungus-like bacteria, Actinomaduria or Nicardia, um, this causes Madura foot. Actinomycosis can cause lumpy jaw. It can come from tooth extraction or other kinds of um, tooth surgery. Actinomadura is not acid fast and Nicardia is. Okay, blastomyces, um, you don't need to know the colors. The mold phase, it has single smooth wall round oval conidias at the ends of short conidia force, so they're not very long off the hyphae. Directly off the hyphae, it causes Gilcrest disease, Mississippi River, you need to know that. Um, it can cause mild chronic respiratory infections and it can spread. All of these can spread. Oh, the yeast phase has the mother and the daughter and they connect with a broad base. It's not so pinched. Coxoides, this is the white the white mold that you're not supposed to open. You tape it up. And get away from you. Okay, this has arthroconidia that is very resistant to um, harsh conditions, especially the heat. Um, this has empty dejunctor cells, alternating empty dejunctor cells. This um, has a thick wall, big spherules. Um, this is the tissue phase. It's seen in the desert. Oops. It's seen in the desert, southwestern United States, and it can spread all over the body. Histoplasma. Um, it has the conidia fours that are 90 degree angles and small. These look like yeast. 
It comes from bird droppings, including chicken and bat guano. Wind is the vector that spreads it. Um, patients inhale it, and it can spread all over the patient. And um, it's seen a lot of times in AIDS patients. Um, Paracoxoides, um, this is the one that looks like a strand of pearls, or that's what I said, that's not the book. Um, but it has the mariner's wheel, ship's wheel or mariner's wheel, and those small things are the daughter cells. Um, <clears throat> Trauma caused by chewing contaminated vegetable matter. Who does that? You know what I mean? Okay, so we don't have a... Um, I hope that the rest of this stuff we can go through faster because we just, I feel like we just did it. Um, the spinal fluid, make sure you know the values of a normal specimen, like how much glucose should be there, what tubes go where, um, where you're supposed to store it, the common, um, the common um, bacteria, older people get strep pneumo, you know what I'm saying, don't you? Um, I feel like y'all know the symptoms of that. Make sure you know it's my page three. Organisms overview, list the gram stain reactions. You need to know those major ones now, okay? Like how to identify Haemophilus influenza. What's the gram stain? What do you do next? What do you do next? What do you do next? Blood cultures, make sure you know those terms, how to collect it, the ones that cause false positives. What's in the broth, the anticoagulants, what they do, um, the continuous automated systems that you put the, bo the bottles in there. They have um, CO2 labeled su substrate and the um, bacteria um, utilizes the CO2. So the, the bottles measure, the instrument measures the CO2 production in the bottle. Brucella has to have a biphasic system. Nutritionally deficient strep will grow in the broth, but they won't grow on the plates. Make sure you know the most common ones. Strep pneumo, 90% are community acquired. Step epidermidis, most common cause of prosthetic heart valve infections. Viridans, most common cause of subacute bacterial endocarditis. Distinguishing normal flora from pathogens. You should have a feel for what normal flora is. Do you feel like you do? What things are in the stool? What things are on the skin? Do y'all feel like you know that? Okay. Pharyngitis, what's the most common cause? Pharyngitis. Group A, strep pyogenes, beta hemolytic. You set up a chocolate plate on throats for kids under six to check for what? Haemophilus influenza. Haemophilus influenza can cause a hepaglottis in, epiglottis infection and a small child can suffocate. But they've invented the Hib vaccine that these don't happen very often. Otitis media, the most common is strep pneumo, Haemophilus influenza. It's usually seen after an ear infection. Make sure you know the most common causes. And then I would just kind of look over the other ones. Um, anything is kind of up for grabs um, with micro. Um, otitis externi of the outer ear. Remember, Pseudomonas causes swimmer's ear. Sinusitis. 
Um, strep pneumo, Haemophilus influenza, Morax cell, Staph aureus are the ones that are usually seen. Pertussis is the whooping cough. It's um, Bordetella, an MP swab of calcium alginate swab, the Borde gingo, and Reagan low. Sputum, I think you know how to um, get it collected. Most common causes. Klebsiella, jelly-like sputum. Pseudomonas, jelly-like sputum. Okay, the eyes, you know there's a lot of different things that can cause the pink eye, Staph aureus and Haemophilus influenza biotype, Aegyptius, Enterobacteriaceae viruses, um, keratitis, all of these say um, Staph aureus, Staph aureus. Remember those, the skin, Staph aureus. If you have no idea, I'd put Staph aureus. Um, Okay, with chlamydia infections, you know that it has to be cultured on special, it's actually viral cultures because it's an obligate intracellular parasite. Um, it has to be in viral transport media, the McCoy or HEP2 or types of cells for those. Um, well, that's all of that unit. UTI, make sure you know how to calculate the colony count and you know how on your lab practice, I gave you that example, um, I think y'all did okay, you didn't put it all, what did you do? Some of you just put the colony count, um, but make sure you know how to do the colony count, um, make sure you know, need, you know the most common ones. What's the most common cause? E. coli. Genital tract, you can identify gonorrhea from a penile discharge, but not a woman um, on gram stain. Um, chlamydia is the most common bacterial STD. Um, that's the one that we were just talking about being obligate intracellular. Bacterial vaginosis is caused by Gardnerella, Mopoluncus, Mycoplasma hominis, and Prevotella. Um, you see clue cells on a wet prep. Um, if you're not sure, if you're not sure, it's a um, clue cell. You add KOH, and it smells fishy. Um, vaginosis is caused by a decrease in lactobacillus and then these have time to grow. Um, syphilis is the second most common STD. We've talked about that several times. The RPR is used to screen. It has false positives. Confirmation is FTA or the MHA and those are for certain. They don't have um, false positives. Cancroids, um, Haemophilus ducre, this is the gram negative cocobacilli in School of Fish on gram stain. Herpes, um, it ha this is a virus, so it has to have a special viral culture done. Um, herpes has a cytopathic effect on the cells that can be seen when you look at it under the microscope. It goes in and can kill the cells. Vulvovaginitis is from either trick or candida. Vaginal infections from IUDs, actinomyces, and they have molar tooth colonies. IUDs are intrauterine device. We screen pregnant women for group B, so don't it doesn't harm the baby. Um, make sure you know what the plates are for. What's Thayer Martin and Martin Lewis for? What is... Um, HBT for? Garnerilla. Garnerilla. Make sure you know those. Gastrointestinal um, infections. Make sure you know what the normal flora are. 
Make sure you know this media on page nine. What's the smack plate for? E. coli O and 57. On page 10, are your numbers matching my numbers? Page 10, it says examination. Okay, make sure you know 1 through 7. Um, salmonella, typhoid fever. Shigella sonia is the most common um, bacteria infection in the United States. Campylobacter is the most common in the world. Um, O157 can cause HUS. What's that? Why are you whispering? Hemolytic uremic syndrome. Um, Yersinia can look like appendicitis. H. pylori, peptic ulcer disease, we do a clo test. Clostridium difficile is antibiotic associated diarrhea. Um, strep bovis, colon cancer, it can get into the bloodstream too. Okay, let's go to unit six. The skin, make sure you know the normal flora. Um, with these skin infections, this is what I was talking about. The most common is Staph aureus. Infantigo, group A in Staph aureus. Folliculitis, um, Staph aureus is the most common. Pseudomonas can cause Jacuzzi syndrome, swimmers here. Fernicles, carbuncles, this is when folliculitis gets worse, so the most common is still Staph aureus. Cellulitis, the most common is group A, cellulitis. Myonecrosis, um, gangrene, clostridium perfringens. Erysiploid, erysiplothrix. Um, burns, pseudomonas, Staph aureus. Dogs and cats, Pasteurella, Staph aureus, Bartonella, anaerobes. Human bites, Iconella, Prevotella, and Fusobacterium. Scalded skin, Staph aureus. Staph's toxic shock, Staph aureus or group A. Um, I would look over all of those and all of those on the next page. With the... Um, um, antibiotics, make sure you know what antibiotics work in what way. Like, let's see, cephalosporins inhibit cell wall synthesis. Um, augmentin, what is that? That's one of those co-drugs where they added the cl clavulanic acid to break the um, beta-lactam ring. Um, genomycin tobramycin for pseudomonas. We do peaks and troughs. Glycopeptides like vancomycin is for MRSA. Chloramphenicol can cause bone marrow aplasia. It's used for typhoid fever and salmonella. How to test. Make sure that you know what do you need to know. The difference between on page, I don't have a page number. Um, it says reporting terms, susceptible, resistant, intermediate. Um, make sure you know number two, number three, and number four. And then on the next page, make sure that you know we use a 0 0.5 McFarland standard. Number, there's two number twos. The factors affecting the test results. Make sure you know that. It seems like there's more than one question about that. For example, um, too high of a cation concentration can cause a false resistance 
Two highs, false resistance. Two lows, false susceptibility. The special testing, homophilus gonorrhea, you do a beta-lactamase. Pneumonia, you, um, strep pneumonia, you do a oxacillin dis to check for penicillin. MRSA versa, you do an oxacillin vancomycin plate. Um, the D test to check for clindamycin resistance. And that's it.